Hey everybody, Jay Young here from King Operating. If you will, go to kingoperating.com, our website, and learn more about the oil and gas business. Every Friday I do a newsletter and I do a video that will teach you something about the oil business. And if you want to know something about the oil business, send me a question and I'll go over those on our Friday newsletter. So kingoperating.com, learn more about our business and get involved. The Jay Young Show is a weekly podcast featuring insightful discussions with anyone from big business CEOs, celebrities, to military heroes. Each interview is a personal conversation about business, life, and anything in between. And now, your host, Jay Young. Hey everybody, Jay Young. This is the Jay Young Show, and man, we've had such a good time. We, we've done an interview before the interview, but uh, but Corey Proctor, what a great guy. I love him. He's, he's a really... Flamboyant gentleman. He's a big guy. I like I like big guys, man. I like I like people. And I, I mean, it's big guy. He's an offensive lineman for the for the Dallas Cowboys, Detroit Lions. But I tell you what, it's all about God and it's all about bringing things down to earth. And that's what we're going to do today. It's not only you know a big guy like you bringing things down to God and talking about it. And I, I want to hear about your faith. I want to hear about what got you to where you are today. Where'd you grow up? You know, we, we want to make sure that we tell our listeners, man, you know, what what's somebody like you, where'd you come from and what went into your mind and what turned you around? What would you have done differently? You know, so I, I'm really good at asking like 12 questions at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but anyway, right. Court Proctor, thank you for coming yeah. on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, this is good. I'm impressed. I say I'm impressed. I mean, oh. This is awesome. You got a great... Let's say a good backdrop with the Jay Young show. This hey. is this place is sick. It's good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Yeah. On a uh, on the, in the afternoon. So anyway, let's talk about Corey real quick. So you grew up up north somewhere, right? You grew up Washington State. Washington State. Um, kind of moved around a lot. You know, my background. I'm middle of three boys originally. We fought a lot. And was uh, as big as you growing up? No, I got the most. I got the size for some reason. <laughs> and it's people see pictures of us now, and they're like, "Man, did you eat all their food growing up?" I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> I said, "Part of that's true because I was a chubby kid." Okay, but uh, no, grew up Washington State, and my dad was a full time veterinarian. Worked on thoroughbreds and cattle, large animal vet, and my mom. Um, she had shoot three jobs growing up, and so kind of that that scene. It was interesting because we're like a lot of people. They they ended up splitting, and that was a hard time to roll through uh, for us three boys because we moved. You know, we lived with mom for a while, lived with dad for a while, and uh, so we moved around to a lot of different schools. And uh, coming up, how old were you? Is this high school, <laughs> junior high? This is about eight or nine years old. Okay, um, and so over. Um, Four-year period, go to seven different schools, mm. and so it was. It was. A, it was kind of a weird thing, yeah. especially for us kids to go through like that. Um, and so we start moving around. You know, I'm going to school here, going to school there, and and you get to know somebody, and then you move. Get to know somebody, and you move, and, and it was a tough deal. But um, so I dove deep into that bag of Doritos, man. Mm. You know, I was a fat kid. I, I love that. And uh, and so it wasn't till seventh grade that I had a kid invite me to play football. Ended up changing my life in a big way, and it was really cool because uh, that's where coaches became such a huge part of my life and that's where I could really start molding and it was interesting because I mean that story is cool I use that in a lot um, of talks that I give now today just because of the power of the moment the power to be able to change the game at any point and really I'm, I'm walking down the hall in uh, in uh, middle school in junior high seventh grade this morning and I'd played some sports but I hadn't played football yet and walking down the hallway and I see this big dude at the end of the hallway and I knew him because I had him in some of my classes, but I didn't know anything about him. The only thing I knew is that he'd been in some fights, and I'd seen him beat up on some guy, and teachers hated him. And that's all I knew, right? And I'm in the middle of this hallway. It's in between classes, and so it's packed, and it's right between the gym and the band room. And so I see, I'm walking down the hallway, I see the guy, and he locks eyes on me. I'm like, you ever lock eyes on somebody you don't want to talk to? I, that's all I knew about this guy is he beat up some mm. people. <laughs> and so I'm like, ah, crap. So now I start ping-ponging off the walls. I kind of start zigzagging to avoid, but I got nowhere to go because I'm in this hallway. And so I get up to him, and he doesn't let me by. 
kind of stops me and looks me up and down. But right there is where he ends up inviting me to play football. Really? Wow. And it was a powerful moment. He didn't try to take you? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Man, I'm like, I'm holding my breath. Like, dude, this guy is going to wallop on me something fierce right, right? and right. he just so he he's like hey man you're a big dude you just come play football <sighs> <laughs> that's all you want that's all you're asking right now yeah absolutely i'll go wow. do whatever you want wow but uh but it was cool and it was powerful because i'm like i'm just some chubby kid i'm some you know i'm i'm like he has no idea what's going on in my life right now he has no idea i'm on my seven different school there's no idea what's happening in my my parents uh, battle what's going on with them and how us boys are processing and what's happening with me and I'm just sitting there thinking about my next school or whatever and this guy just shows up and makes an invite that changes my life hmm. you know and so I end up getting into a football family and getting into a, a place where I realize I have a gift and I earn a scholarship I go play for Montana I come into the NFL play for the Dallas Cowboys where I meet my wife and have subsequently have my daughter and i live today and i'm sitting here talking wow wow that's cool so coach has made a big impact in your life huge 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 T- tell me some something about that or tell me some good examples of how coaches help did they they push you and they kept you grounded out of the people that you don't want to associate with or how did how did coaches affect you or help you it was I, I think I think just because both my parents they worked they and I'm not speaking ill about my parents I love my dad I love my mom they're huge and I got my work ethic from them in a big way mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> but where they worked a lot you know I turned to coaches that they just happened to be the guys that were ended up being big figures in my life mm-hmm. and so naturally the guys that pushed me the guys that help sharpen the tools, help me to learn how to work with a team or take coaching, um, and they would speak into my life in big ways. You know, you know, big, big, tough kid. Love the effort. Every coach loves a kid that gives great effort. And the very first time that I went hard mm. or I gave great effort, I got a huge praise from my coach. Wow, that was like a piece of chocolate. To right. that kid. You right. know? <laughs> I was like, and so I chased that hard. Mm. And so, because of that, the effort picked up in a, a big way, and so sorted, sorted, uh, so did athleticism. And I ended up taking that from my teachers too. So they were a big thing. My grades went up and down, but I remember oh, junior year of high school uh, when Progress Sports came out, and I had a one point nine. You had to have two point to be eligible to play. Mm. Right. And our coach, we came in. Coach used to always do this. He'd call out the guys that were failing classes, and he saved me for last. So I, I cared about what he what he said so much, and he was like, "I mean, he's looking at the paper. He goes, and this guy, I can't believe, Corey Proctor, one point nine, and I had three Ds in six classes at the time, mm. and I felt like I was oh my a little God. peon, you yeah, know, yeah, and so." By the end of that that semester and then the end of the spring, I ended up having a 3.4 I finished on the year. And I wow. had to come back and tell him because he didn't work in the school. But I came back to tell him because I'm like, look, it mattered that much. Wow. So coaches, they, they were huge in speaking. It were just kind of beacons that I chased mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that helped me in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, our parents are pretty much well, whatever their parents did is what – your parents did and you know it goes on up and down the the cycle but coaches are different i mean they can be a great impact or they can be positive or negative you know barry switzer and jimmy johnson i'm sure were different different coaches but <laughs> every time you know but but it is only because of what went into the parents minds you know so we don't blame our parents but no. but but coaches are are awesome and they did they did really good for you so what would you recommend to somebody today a kid today? Do you, do you recommend football? Did you did, did what? What would you recommend to people today or kids today? Um, they're, they're I, as big as you are and thinking, man, I could. You know, you have the size to to do it. What would you recommend? Get them in. Uh huh. I get them in. Whether it's football, get them in multiple sports. Um, you know, here in Texas, so many people want to specialize in a sport. When uh, Nick Saban from University of Alabama actually did a study with his own um, within his own teams. The likelihood of of a kid getting a scholarship there, you were forty percent more likely. It might have even been higher than that. Can't quite remember, but I think it was a significant 
advantage if you were a multi-sport athlete versus a single. Um, but I would I would say I have this a lot with parents. So like either a single parent, I don't know what to do with my kid, mom with a son, um, or parents in general. Like I said, you need to get them around or in an environment that's going to help mold them. Hmm. And teams do that. Right. Right. Now, not every single team. It's not going to be the cure all or the fix. Okay, but you are who you hang with. Right. Right. And if I'm hanging hanging out with a ten thousand dollar a year job, that's all I'm ever going to be. Right. I want to hang out with some millionaires, so I want to go hang out with them and understand why they're as big and as successful as they are. In the same way, I'm going to go hang out with Varsity versus the JV. Right. Because gotcha. I want to be with that team. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Good yeah. for you. Good for you. Hang out with drug dealers. You're gonna get drugs. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's absolutely. What, it's what well, I want to talk. I mean, you know, right now you speak. What 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 do you do today? We, you, I'm gonna we're gonna go back and talk more about your your NFL career and all that stuff. But just to kind of give people an idea of what you're doing today, you're an, you're a registered investment advisor, so you you take care of people's money. Yeah, you're open to people coming in and talking to you about their retirement, and you manage money for people. Yes, and you also are. A, speaker inspirational speaker do you do engagements or can i call you up and say hey i've got an event and love for you to come over and speak is that what you do as well i do okay so i have my wealth management is my full time okay uh, that's called pro capital and uh pro capital wealth management pro capital tx.com and that's pro capital okay. and uh, that's something that i developed i wanted to kind of build my own brand there and uh i in the speaking and that came, and we can get into this, but it, it kind of was born from my faith, where athletes get asked to speak a lot, professional athletes get asked to speak, what's your story? But the typical athlete that comes into this, you know, like an assembly with kids or even a corporate setting, and they want to ask you questions, like, man, what happened? They'll lay it on you. Hey, say something to the crowd, you know? They're like, man, thanks for having me. Uh, keep working. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, exactly. that's all I got, and, yeah. and it's and not a lot can articulate, and and it's not their fault. It's that um, you know my my space is faith. That's what I love to speak on in a big way, and some corporate gigs. But um, but I love coming in because you know God really illuminated the vision of my life and really gave me uh, essentially the ability to look back and see how people have moved, to see how He's moved in my life, mm -hmm. and how you sharpened me and how I sharpened you and it was and it was powerful all of a sudden I was kind of getting these revelation pieces where I could see that and now I can work on it where I can articulate it and when you can articulate it articulate your testimony that's one of the power, most powerful tools you ever have in your shed mm -hmm. is your own story right and you're like I might be the dumbest guy in the world there's one thing I know is he showed up in my life in a big way mm -hmm. I don't know everything but I know he's involved right and right. if you can come back to your own testimony, your story, that's conviction. Right. You can follow, use that as your base. Right. Yeah. So let's go through the NFL. What, what was there any? I mean, there's some NFL players that went through drugs or went through spending all their money or or what? Tell me some good things and some bad things about the NFL. Oh, I you know, good things are obviously the relationships, and I got a lot of good buddies who do some amazing stuff now post career some went into coaching who you are played killing it for the Cowboys during what era what I played 5 uh, years wasn't it my career was 2005 6 7 8 9 and then I was in Miami with the Dolphins 2010 okay so 6 total who was with the Cowboys so with, during that time during that time uh, I was it was Drew Bledsoe with the Tony Romo switch you guys remember the Seattle game yeah. everybody remembers that oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> but Tony had made the pro bowl and in like half a season, which right. is pretty incredible. Uh, but Tony, Tara Owens, Marion Barber, Jason Witten. Uh, on the offensive line, we had Flozell Adams, Andre Girard, Mark Colombo, Leonard Davis, Mark Rivera, Leonard Davis, and that switch there. Mm. Okay. Um, and as with all these guys, they're pretty powerful. Team. Well, still yeah. good, still good buddies today with them. Oh yeah. Well, you, you play in a band with Colombo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Free Rain? Free Rain. R-E-I-G-H-N. Right is the name of your band. Yeah, Free Rain. Do you still, do you still jam? Well, uh, not together very much. Right. I mean, uh, Mark's... What did you do it for? What? We just liked it. Yeah. I mean, Mark, um, He we are talking in the locker room after working out, off-season workout, and he started telling me about his band in Chicago when he was with the Bears, and I'm like, hold up. 
did we just become best friends? <laughs> and because like so we're both kind of metal rock heads and we like that. And uh, and so I was like, yeah, man, I play the guitar. I got a kid at the house, a drum kit at the house. I'm like, I play the drums. We should hang out more. And so that's where that was born. Wow. Yeah. So did you did you uh, get another? You need two guitars, right? Lead guitar, a bass guitar, a drummer, and a singer. Did you have all four? Or we did- had four, so we ended up. It was just Mark and I screwing around. It was about as bad as you would imagine it <laughs> sounded. And then Leonard Davis had a bass, and when he joined the team, we're like, "Oh, dang, let's all jam," you know. So, and then he had a buddy from Wortham High School he went to school with, Justin Chapman, who uh, who's a real musician, and. <laughs> He came and uh, wanted to play with us, and he really kind of elevated the level because of his because of his skill. And, wow. and so he had some of his own songs. Mark had some of his own songs, and just just all original stuff. Like we weren't trying to break the bank on anything or be crazy, but we got some attention for it. And all of a sudden, we got asked to do some gigs that were pretty awesome. Wow. And yeah, we what's played, the biggest gig? We played. Uh, there was a couple. There's some really cool ones. We played in. Um, a uh, couple House of Blues here, one here in Dallas, one in uh, Vegas, with um, well, I blanket the hair the hair metal band that screws around a bunch. I'm gonna blank their name. They fly um, back and forth between L.A. and and uh, Vegas. Not Molly Crew or no, or no, or, no but uh, well, they're just kind of a, they're a funny funny hair metal band. Funny hair metal band, and it's Kim. You got anything? Any ideas? I, Derek? I <laughs> Derek's a hair metal metal guy. They, uh, no, he's. <laughs> We'll think but about that. that It'll come up in a minute. We played Sunken Gardens down in San Antonio with, uh, we opened up for Cage of Elephant, Flyleaf, Five Finger Death Punch right before they rolled up in a big way, Three Days Grace. And then we uh, we played Hear Trees downtown Deep Ellum, mm. Dallas uh, with, uh, um, uh, with Seven Dust, which is pretty pop- yeah. powerful. And then yeah. Vinnie Paul was the drummer for Pantera. Uh, he just passed us last year, but he was a huge Cowboys fan, so he's a huge fan of our, of us in the band. So he'd come out to shows. Oh my god! And oh yeah, wow, that's it, awesome. It was, it was, that's it was, awesome. It was wild. So did you have? Uh, did you make any money? A little bit of money, or a little bit? Nothing crazy. You know, yeah. we had we had a fee for some shows because we got yeah. to justify the time away from our families. Yeah. Um, and then I got what some royalties from uh, VH1 Classic uh, Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Right. Oh yeah, that's right. VH1. Yeah, yeah did yeah. that. That was kind of wild. So David Fishoff, who uh, started Gladiators, he put that. He puts that on, but that was awesome because other guys didn't do it. I was the only one who was game for it, and so I'm sitting there hanging out with Kit Winger and Rudy Sarzo and Mark Hudson and Lita Ford and and um, Brett Michaels from Poison and like I got to hang out. They treated me as one of the stars instead of just one of the cast, <laughs> and so I'm like having breakfast with. Wow. These dudes hearing their stories. Wow. There's some pretty wild ones. <laughs> I, I bet there is. I bet there is. Wow. Wow. That's great. Well, that's good. So so um you did you did the NFL. Did you tell me anything good about the NFL or bad? What what was the bad things about the NFL or whatever? I know we get off on subjects and I get asked. No, yeah, you're good. Uh, you know the bad things uh a lot of people obviously uh, guys squandering money. But I, I don't think that's an athlete thing. I think it's a society thing. S- similar to you see a, a, a lot of winner blowing all their winnings. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I see that a lot in the financial world now, right? But um, you know, the tough things that you see that people do not see is the amount of pressure that goes in on guys, mm. and it's the pressure from coaches, from scouts, uh, on yourself. You put tons on yourself anyway, from your agent, from even your family um, to perform. And when you don't perform. Uh, you're a huge letdown essentially to everybody. Mm-hmm. Now, that's how you feel. And so what's tough about it is <clears throat> you have so much pressure on top of you that so many guys lose the fun of the game. Like where they had a blast before just dominating. They might have been dominating the whole life where, all right, we have some bad snaps and for some reason guys couldn't get over it. And and I, I never liked the coaches. I've had plenty of coaches that scream and yell at me but cared. Mm-hmm. I never liked the coaches that scream and yell, and that's the end of your relationship, and that's all it was. I hated mm-hmm. that. Um, because you can't get uh, the depth out of somebody. You can't get the next level out of somebody unless you know what drives them and who they are. And and that's where I've seen so many similar, similarities in the corporate world and in the, in, in, the, um, in the NFL is those exact same things happen. Wow. You, know, you have the same 
a manager of a sales team that's trying to drive you to get your sales up. Uh, meanwhile, your sales are lagging for whatever reason, and he never takes the time to talk to you about it. It's just like, hey, uh, Jay, pick these up, or next quarter is, quarter is going to be a different conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's the same thing in the league. Mm-hmm. And okay, part of that pressure is important. Part of that we need to. We need to be challenged. we got to have that. But uh, if we're not challenged in the right fashion, we don't fully understand the person. I mean, like, like I, I could be talking to a turtle and telling him to climb the tree. Right. You better climb the tree or you're going to be cut next week. Next week. Right. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense to him. Yeah. All right? So in the same way, it happens in the league that way. And, and I'm like, there's still a big disconnect in the mental aspect of the game. I think for coaches and players alike. And, and, and it's hard. You see some transitioning, uh, different verticals trying to work into that. Uh, psych- psychologically, psych- psychologic, psycholog- I can't even psychologically. say it. Psychologically, they're trying to work their way into that. Industry's trying to tap into that. Yeah. But a lot of them don't care about it. Because yeah. right? it's, it's the physical, it's the tangible. I can feel this, I can measure this, move it. Right. And so right. you see that that sector really struggling to find its way in there because it's so hard to deal with. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So after after football, let's say 2000, was it 11, 10, 11, something like that? Th- there was something with cancer that I read something about. So so what, what was there about cancer? Do you remember anything about cancer? Yeah, man. We had um, – so after 2010 was my last season – a lot of surgeries, tried to uh, make it back, didn't happen, had to force to get a normal job. Mm. I was in sales first before I started uh, Pro Capital. Okay. And, you know, you got you get ticked off because you feel like you got more left in the tank. And then uh, we kind of hit a big, a big tough place. Uh, my younger, uh, our younger brother, uh, Casey, him and his wife, they had a uh, son, Evan, right after his first birthday uh, was diagnosed with cancer with brain cancer ATRT oh, wow. and uh, and it was a process of I want to say about eight months nine months um, before it took over hmm. and and so ultimately losing him to cancer was a big moment for us to be basically F you to God hmm. right you know? right and and like so many people I'm like fine you don't want to be a piece of this I'll do it myself yeah and I, part of me still respects that in a big way because mm-hmm. you control so much in your own life. But um, it, so, how did you get over that blaming God for His death and and being the person, the the godly man you are today? How did you? How did you, what, what, is there a passage in the Bible that you read that you really liked, or was there something else that just said, well, "Hey, God didn't God didn't kill that kid for you know whatever"? I mean, it's not His fault. I mean, how did you how did you get through that? That was that was tough, and that, that's let's just say my story is not the same for everybody. But what happened with us essentially is we kind of went into that place, cracks in our families turned to craters. It was a rough deal, and uh, so we had some friends over. Uh, Blake Bevan, who is a former first round draft pick t- pitcher to the Rangers uh, from Irving, Texas, around here. Him and his wife Allison were over. We were having some uh, some wine and playing card games and just hanging out. And my wife, Megan, had been looking for a church the whole time. She's been more spiritual than me. And I didn't care, right? I didn't care about that. So they had this side conversation one night. <laughs> and, and so Allison had told Megan, say, hey, we're going to 11 a.m. service. You can come with us. You know, it's great. Over to this place called Milestone Church in Keller. And, well, they had this conversation. We go let them out. It's the end of the night. We let them out of the house. Megan closes the door. She looks at me. She goes, hey, I'm going to take Grace, our baby girl. Um, I'm going to take her to 11 a.m. service over at their church. You can come if you want to. And drops the mic and walks away. Wow. And I'm sitting here like, hold up. This is my house. (laughs) This is going to tell me what to do. (laughs) Fine. We'll go, but I'm leading us in there, right? And so... (laughs) <laughs> I'm driving. I can yeah. leave what I want. Yeah. <laughs> so this goes. So I'm just checking a bucket, or I'm just checking off a box for my wife, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And so we go into Milestone Church, and the pastors are trying to greet you, say, good to meet you. I'm, like, basically kicking them away and cussing at them. I'm like, get out of my face. Don't talk to me. The children's ministry are trying to say, hey, we'll, t- we'll watch your daughter for you while you're at service. I'm like, don't touch her. She's mine. And, you know, full wall up. And uh, I did not want to be there at all and, mm-hmm. and, and ready to fight, essentially. And uh, 
And so we go in. Were you, were you angry at something at this time because you didn't want to go to church, or was there something that just God just didn't didn't really feel like that this was your place and you didn't want to go, or what? At that time, I was mad. But I'm like, I, didn't, I didn't. I was mad at him. He took yeah. he took away my son, your nephew? Or not my nephew. Yeah. Um, which I couldn't understand. Why would you take away this perfect gift? Right. Right. Why would you take it with all the scum in the earth right okay. now that we have all the crazy people we have? Why would you take away that? Gotcha. And and so I still had that very much on me. And so we're walking in, and um, and service starts. Um, they they have a worship team that shows, which is kind of out of my element. This is weird at first, and but one of the songs, second or third song. Uh, he totally lays a vision on me of my nephew sitting on his lap, mm. and it wasn't any any words specifically, but I had this overwhelming feeling of I got him. Mm. He's good, and that wasn't like a hey, I give my life to Christ moment. That mm-hmm. wasn't it. That uh, brought down the wall enough to show up the next week. Wow, wow! And, and so I wanted something there, mm-hmm. and so that was was so cool. Was. He used my nephew, and I've had a lot of other revelation pieces since, but he used my nephew to come bring me back and say, I've got more for you. Right. And I'm going to open up your eyes in a big way, and I've been equipping you this whole time. I've been molding this guy this whole time, and now I'm going to unleash you to essentially be a leader in this world for me. Wow. And and so that's what happened. It's all of a sudden, <clears throat> you know, I get similar when churches, a lot of times you'll get involved in small groups. So I got in a men's development group. And they'll identify kind of natural leaders in the, in the space and develop those guys. And so there is where I gave my life to Christ. There's where I became an insatiable reader. I became, I came, I, all of a sudden I'm reading books, listening to podcasts, listening to mess, messages, TEDx talks, anything, having conversations and absorbing it all. Mm. And just like you can't pour from an empty cup, Imagine when that thing is overflowing, what you can do with it. Right, right. And that's start, what started happening with me is all of a sudden, you happen to be the poor sucker that was getting <laughs> the information, and we would talk, and you would have something going on in your life or whatever, and whatever I was reading at the moment, whether it was scripture or just a book or a message, would, would shoot into that that conversation. Wow, wow. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. What was the What's the favorite book? Did you have two or three that you liked up front <laughs> uh, that you've read? One of my favorites by far is uh, Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. And I would, I would challenge, especially any guys, um, women too, but any guys that are struggling with what the church is, what Christianity looks like, because um, so many guys don't want to go into it because they think Christianity or the church is kind of this tamed down, like just be a nice guy, BS, garbage thing. When Christ was a guy who would go pick fights, mm-hmm. he was he was not he was a loving he was a loving savior. He was, but there were times where he's come out written to ready to throw punches. Hmm. And a lot of people that side of the Christ doesn't get talked about at all, right? You know, and um, in the same. <clears throat> path go read that and we kind of really illuminate some big things and what god has called us to be and and another one is um pastor a pastor out of la his name is erwin mcmanus and he wrote a book save nothing uh, the last arrow save nothing for the next life awesome book well wow. and wow. yeah write that down, <laughs> yeah, write that down. the it's, last arrow save nothing for the next life and, and what I love about these books and these reads are essentially kind of a primitive faith, right? And it, it, is, and it is born from, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know it. In Genesis, where God talks about when man was made, he created man from the dust of the earth. Hmm. You know, dust of the earth, like that's about as primitive as it gets. And so you talk about a lot of stories in the Bible, where do they have their biggest encounters? It's not in the city, typically, but it's out in primitive land. And we're going out hunting. We're going out in the land. We're going doing some things. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden, he can talk to you when everything's quiet enough to talk. Right. And and so what I love about it is, you know, you're you're not, you know, you're not this Christian to go be this really nice guy. He's equipped you to be a fighter and a lover for your wife, and everything else, everything in between for your family to go get things done for him. Right, and that was one of my biggest. Li- I love one of my favorite lines from uh, John Eldridge at Wild at Heart book was, "A woman doesn't want a really nice guy; she wants a lover and a fighter. Mm. Somebody's going to love her intensely 
right. and is going to fight for her. Right. Right. And I'm not talking about push her out of the way and take the bus as it's rolling down the street. I'm talking about the bus that's coming through your door. Mm. Right. And so yeah. many guys, and this is what I, I see that I love speaking to in a big way is is uh is guys become passive we have a big issue with us is we become passive when we're naturally action active action driven men we'll want to go executing our work execute in some other form um, when all of a sudden it gets hard in our home is when we become weak hmm. and when we're forced to go talk to our wife or forced to do and so this is what happens we have an over 50 percent divorce rate and subsequently those the divorce rates of those kids goes way up Mm -hmm. Just because that, that's why. Because, and I don't want to bash on anybody who's gotten a divorce um, because, look, there's a, a route that God wants you to take from that, right? But I don't want men and women to lose out on something huge or a massive gift in their life because they weren't willing to fight the entire fight. Hmm. Right. And, and <clears throat> that's something huge that stemmed from my faith that is like it basically lit up eyes to fight. In a yeah. different path, different gotcha. way. Yeah. But you could talk a, but you could have a whole sermon on yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's huge. Yeah. And it's so many people struggle with it. Yeah. And and it's a lot of it. And what I what I don't like, especially when I'm speaking to kids, is what's typical, right? When I want you to, if I'm a teacher, you're a kid. I want you to sit down, not act out, and you listen to what I got to say. Meanwhile, you don't want, especially boys, you don't want to do that at all. You want to go play and go do things and experience. Hmm. And <clears throat> but we we do that, or the kids get into fights and we're like, you need to you need to shape up, quit acting like a little jerk, right? When he's supposed to have that fight, hmm. that Good. fight is supposed to be there, not just for his own protection, but for his family's protection at some point. Right. He was built for that. Right. And the problem is, is our fight gets misdirected to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And when we don't, essentially, we don't have that fight, we thirst for it other places, or it gets put somewhere else, and now we're fighting against our wife mm -hmm. or against our family, and it's never for our family. Right. When you can shift that right. perspective, now we got something dangerous, <laughs> something, something good. Right, right. Yeah. Well, the church has saved a lot of marriages. It's it's it. it you know, if you go to, if you go to church together, you live together, you love together, you stay together. You know, and I know that's helped out a lot with a lot of families. So I'm sure you do that. So that's good. What? Um, so tell me more about Pro Capital and what's different. What do you do different than than other RAs? Because there's a lot of RAs out there. And but I want I want somebody to call you after this show and say, Hey, tell me something, Corey, that you do different or. I got some money that I want you to help me with. Tell me about the process if somebody calls you and what's different from you than somebody else and how do you take care of people? You know, the biggest thing for me is is finance is just a piece of your life. All right, but it's a big piece. How many marriages um, fail because of finances? Mm. A lot. Um, and it's such a huge piece in our life. So I'm like, I was I was interested in my career I put a, a big chunk of my earnings with my advisor, and she killed it for me. Like, and I made look. If killed I, it good or killed it bad? Killed it in a great way. Great way. Okay. She was awesome. Made you a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. And so, in I played six years. Five out of those six years, I made minimum. And one year, I did really did awesome. Well, but you know, when you're taxed at a forty-two percent rate, plus you're giving three percent away to your agent, three percent away to your union dues. All of a sudden, 52% is what you end up with. And you're like, right. oh, my gosh. Right? right? And a lot of people don't know that. But <clears throat> she did awesome for me. So I took a big interest. And I was just able to steward it and control it in the right way. And and uh, thanks to her help. And so the biggest difference with me is, that, man, I've been able to walk down that path and do well with my money. And a lot of people have. And there's a lot of good advisors out there. But I want to dive down into what is really the purpose of the money. And so many people, it's, it's kind of classic. We're like, okay, you know, we'll save for retirement. Yeah, we do all that stuff. That's great. But, like, why, why are you doing this? What mm -hmm. is the purpose of this money? What is the foundation of this dollar going to serve to your family ultimately? Right. Okay. Like, are you building for retirement? Or are you building for a life? Right. And, and that's what I love hitting with people is because, you know, a lot of people have no idea what they're building towards. Right. And if we don't identify that, how can we ever grab it? 
Mm-hmm. You know. Meanwhile, we see the guy who's building a company, or see uh, the marriage who seems to be doing awesome. Um, when we can build an incredible life just within our own, and your portfolio is a piece of that too. Hmm. So that's that's where I love to get in and hear people's stories, and so you can come in and say, okay. Um, and I'll identify different centers of influences to help increase my business, right? And there's some practical ways you can dive into that. But, you know, I would say go go to my site, check it out, research me. And if you think you like me, then we do business. Good. That's that's the biggest thing. And cause yeah. people, so I'll deal with other professionals. Don't leave me other professionals. So you'll, you'll take my money and go, I, I want to put it into this this market or this with this advisor or this person that's going to invest my money. We had a guy on um, the last show, and the last show was talking about this guy that, that takes the money, and he's if you'll take a piece of your money and put it in this other account, he wants to trade it, right? He does uh, algorithms, right? Algorithms and all these different things, and and plays the market and buys and sells, and he's a smart guy, J.P. Morgan guy. Okay. So I guess you're talking about that's how you could. You do the same thing. You take the money, look at it. Is it long term? When do you want to retire? You're 45 now. You want to retire when you're 65. How much money do you have now? How much money do you want when you retire? And what are we going to put it in? How much money are you going to be putting into the the program? I do all that. Right. Yeah. So I'll do I'll do the protection, the life insurance pieces, pensions, re, uh, retirements, brokerage services, just single accounts. Right. We're going to get in the stock market. We want to get into alternative investment, REITs, mm-hmm. something. Yeah. And uh, but it depends on your profile. Like, what do you want specifically? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then we break down some other aspects of that. And that stuff, it is. I do all that, and that's great. But <clears throat> where that's where I say, where okay, we can do that. It's the the market is pretty simple. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts, but it's pretty simple. And if we keep it simple, we're gonna do okay. Mm-hmm. All right, and it'll fluctuate like it's always done. The long term. You know what? We don't know what's going to do in the in the future, but historically, it's always gone up. We just right. hit a new new high yesterday, and um, with uh, the Dow and the S and P, right? And so that was a big deal. That's pretty cool. But um, you know, that's where I say, who are you dealing with essentially? Mm-hmm. And is it somebody? Obviously, you want good business from them, and we can dive down in the numbers. But the majority of people that I deal with, they just want to know that I'm okay. Mm-hmm. That I'm like not a douchebag, essentially. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and so that's where I, I'll tell, you know, I'll deal with um, a lot of individual accounts and some small businesses right now, and then, but I'll tell them, like my other professionals, like, hey, how can I help you get business, or how can we work with each other? And I'm like, just people that you think that might like me or might seem like me. That's who you hook me up with. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Where, where are you located? I'm located in Trophy Club, Texas. Trophy Club, okay. So you can uh, you can just uh, office out of the house right now, gotcha. honestly. So I have a whole lot of coffees and meetings and meet people at their homes. Right. So that's what that's where it is. Okay. Yeah. So Trophy Club out in that area. So you're local, so you can go meet people and see people out in that area. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you want somebody that you meet personally, then you can see out there. If, if you're in Georgia or something, it's kind of hard to. If you need a one-on-one personal relationship, you probably do people in other states. I'm sure yeah. there's people in other states that that you have accounts with. But um, you'd be surprised. You can do a lot over the phone. Yeah, and that's why I love. And our industry hasn't. I, don't, I think it hasn't been fully optimized with the, with the electronic piece, but we can do pretty much everything electronically. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love. It's like okay, I can get all the paperwork. Say we're going to execute this plan of action. I can get all the paperwork done electronically and send it to you to sign electronically. Wow. That's, I love that. Yeah. Because that minimizes my paper because I don't have to have a bunch of physical. I can keep it in the cloud. Right. And, and hire a document company to do that for me. Yeah. But, uh, but that keeps things simplified for you. Right. Uh, which Because now you can bank through it. We can do it over the phone if you want. But bank so through do you, it. Do you meet your clients once a month or once every three months? or Depends on the client. Depends on the client. Okay. So minimum once a year. Okay. Right. And that's minimum once a year. Minimum. Okay. And that's what I'd say with everybody. If you don't touch base with your guy once a year, it's it's both sides. But your guy should be touching base with you. Yeah. Um, other than that, I have other clients that are just different financial situations that, um, you know, they have influx of cash right now. They're early young executives, but they're just doing awesome. So we'll revisit quarterly. 
Mm-hmm. I say, okay, where are you at? You know, what, what's what? How much cash in the bank do you have right now? Yeah. Okay, is it surpass that emergency amount where we can do something with it? What's your future plans? Right. Do you want to put that into your brokerage or or defer some money and put it in your IRA? What, whatever. Right. And uh, and so <clears throat> it's different for everybody, but there's a lot. How much do you manage? How much do you think you manage? Hundred million or? No, no, I'm I'm relatively new this year. So, okay. Oh, you're new this uh, year. Yeah. So I well, okay. I started last year. Gotcha. Got my life taken care of, and you know I I I have just under ten million right now. Okay. So it's nothing crazy. Gotcha. But you know hey, you're building a, a business. Yeah. Playing the drums. Yeah. Build a build a <laughs> yeah. Build a business. Build a rock band. Right. Man. Hey. <laughs> Love that. Well, hey, that's great. Well, so website, probably have an app. There's an app for everything. There's right? an app for everything. <laughs> app for everything. <laughs> I have my website, ProCapitalTX.com. Uh, my, if you, when you do your app, when I set you up and do all that, you can, the app is through my broker dealer, which is Woodbury. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, who just deals with independent uh, independent advisors. Gotcha. And then my speaking, you can go to CoreyProctor.com. Oh, it's great website. Yeah. Love love that website. Really, okay. really good. Professionally done. I like it a lot. Appreciate yeah, it. I saw that. Yeah. So, yes, but go to your website. Yeah. And have you come over and speak. You'll come up to speak to families or see kids in the hospital or you'll you'll do pretty much anything. I mean, you're you're a you're a good guy in the area to do things for other people and uh, that's what I can really tell about you is that Oh, you're here for other people, which yeah. is which is awesome. I still got to feed my family, you know, don't because I get a lot of people wanting free gigs all over the map. But uh, yeah. I'll do some locally because that's where my baby girl is growing up, and I want right. to impact people there. Right. Um, but you know, I I do I do a couple gigs a month, and a lot of Faith Gateway Church has done a lot with me. Thankfully, they took me to Israel this last year, hmm. to speak at their men's conference there, uh, and then. Uh, past that, it's a lot of it's a lot of men's conferences. A lot of um, I've done some um, pa- uh, sermons at churches. Did uh, Father's Day? Did uh, Rochester, New York, Brownwood Church over there, which is really cool. Mm. And then um, and then I've had some random corporate gigs. I got a small one over here in Grapevine, Texas. A um, a shipping company, logistics company, wants me to talk to their 15 employees. Mm. He goes, I need a refresher for these guys. And right. That's that's it. So. You know, we're working on <clears throat> what does that look like when his with, with his problems right. internally. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, hey everybody, we're gonna finish up. Anything else you want to add to the end, the summary, the final, <laughs> the finale, the conclusion, or anything? Anything? No. Go. Hey, if you're if you're interested in it, if you liked anything, man, go follow me on social media at Corey Proctor on Instagram, Twitter at Corey Proctor Official on Facebook. And I, I I love to share my life. I love to articulate that. And if you guys get some juice out of it, come on. Yeah, there you go. Share back. I like that. Well, I'll tell you what, you have a lot of great experiences that people can learn from. You know, and, and that helps in managing money because you've seen the money flow of people, you know, and and, and and so you know what to do to help people now and tell stories. and Because and, telling stories sometimes really does help. It could help somebody, you know, off and on, I mean, just turn a switch, you know. Well, you can't, well, it's just like anything else. I can't, I can't. If you've never budgeted, you're like, it's hard to change people, right? So if you've never budgeted in your life, I'm not going to tell you to just budget right and you change. Mm-hmm. There has to be something else. It has another piece of the equation that resonates, right? And so it's the same thing on the football field or in the sales or in the corporate gig, where I need to find out how my guy works to ultimately. Um, get him to follow me in the right direction right then that's how that same conversation goes if right. i understand what's driving that spending or what's driving that budget or what's driving the, those behaviors mm-hmm. then i can speak to him yeah and look i, I can't change everything or i right. can't make you do anything but i can have an influence on those right and that's that's what i want to do i want to help uh those situations mm. right and if that's you can great. if you're doing awesome but you know, you're you're making three hundred grand, but spending three fifty. I'm like, come on, brother. <laughs> we need we need to show you why that's happening. You gotta make more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just make more money than you're spending, man. That's Absolutely. All. <laughs> I mean, make three hundred. You gotta make six hundred. I mean, <laughs> dude, you gotta you gotta learn how to make more money. You know. So, but but anyway, hey, I really appreciate you coming in today. It's been awesome meeting you and seeing your heart, especially with the, with with God and going to the church and. God bless that. That is an awesome story. Appreciate that a lot. And um, it's always great to hear people 
you know, they, 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 they have, you know, thought that God was against them or because of your nephew's death, you know, you're like, God, you know, why'd you do this? He's a great kid. And all of a sudden you, you know, it's not, it's not him. It wasn't him that did it intentionally, obviously. And it's something that you, that you got past and you, you, you know, you went to church and man, it's a great place to be. And, um, you know, it really is. So that's, that's awesome. So, but thank you very much for showing up today. And I really appreciate that. And, so anybody go on CoreyProctor.com, go on Corey Proctor, Google, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> whatever. We're going to be on live 7 o'clock Central on um, Facebook. Kim's telling me that we're finished up. So, hey, everybody, thank you very much. God bless in America, and love you, Mom. Have a great day, Mom. Love you. Love you.